Well, here we are. Will this be the one? <laughs> oh, I chuckle so, I chuckle so. I, I think I'm more or less on double figures now for the number of times I've tried to do this flight, uh, hence why this video is so late. Um, and as you can see, Heathrow doesn't really exist. Um, I've had to disable a lot of, lot of scenery. Um, to get the vast somewhere reasonable that I don't get an out of memory error. Uh, and I eventually did manage to do the flight um, with this scenery config that I've, I've got now. Um, and I ran out of fuel. So the only thing that's changed since the planning video, bar the scenery and everything, but in terms of the flight and the actual flying side of things, is I've stuck about another 10 tons of fuel on the thing um which will which is almost 45 minutes or so uh extra fuel might be might be a bit longer actually uh what are we on four tons an hour four eight twelve yeah it's about 40 minutes of extra fuel um which should get us there no problemo um we ran out of fuel basically between Crete and Cyprus, so it was, you know, only about 10 or so minutes, 15 minutes maybe, short, but that would have been to tanks completely empty, which you, you don't want to get. Um, so here's hoping good things this time around. So that's the, um, that's the plan. Uh, we'll do the usual things. I'm because I've done this so many times now. I am rather proficient with all the checklists, so uh, we should be off the ground. PDQ pretty damn quick. Uh, so we'll save that. Uh, no, we won't save that. So that's the fuel load in from CPS X, uh, and we'll apply the load and balance. You see, it actually puts us quite nicely. Uh, on a load and balance having a little bit of extra juice um, and we're going to be going off London Heathrow 27 left which I am well aware is not in operation at the moment but then neither is Concorde so uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it uh, we won't be online simply because that's another memory hog um, and yeah I've had so many issues with out of memory and whatnot. I'd uh, far sooner just get this flight done. We can always repeat it. We can do the return online, so on and so forth, if this goes well. But I just want to get this video out there because it is such an interesting and such a good flight to do. So, we're cold and dark at the moment. Uh, what I do need to do is the usual for Concorde request aircraft repair, uh, just in case it slammed itself into the ground when we spawned in and request ground air and ground poor. So we'll have a look at the overhead and yes the sound will keep cutting out every time I tab out to use chase plane. I haven't got a stream deck, absolutely want one, uh, but at the moment not quite rich enough for that. Uh, so what do I want? Upper panel. Um, yeah, if I drag that onto the screen that's a bit better. Lovely. Right, so lights as required. We'll turn nav lights on because we're not going to be hanging about. Uh, pressure static heaters should be off. ADS heaters are off. All that is off. That is good. That's what we want. Engine anti-ice we probably won't need. Um, actually, let's just confirm that. That would be a good idea. Conditions. <laughs> Temperature 9 degrees, dew point 5. So technically we could run with anti-ice. And possibly should, but we're not going to. Uh, it's raining. QNH1020. I'm going to say we don't need anti-ice today. It's actually nice and sunny here in uh, East Mids. So, yeah. Stick that, London. <laughs> Uh, transponders in standby because we're cold and dark, so I'm not even going to check that. Grain power, right, okay, cool beans. So we'll get straight over onto grain power, and we'll go, oops, the other way. And as we know, Concord does like to ping pong at you, so we'll kill that off. I'm just going to turn my speakers down. 
I'm playing about with the audio levels for FSX because I, I'm well aware that in previous videos it's it's very very quiet. Equally, I don't want it to be very very loud because one, you can't hear me jabbering on, um, and two, she loud, <laughs> she loud. Uh, so right, visor is up. Ground power's on. Uh, oh, AC electrics. I didn't do the AC panel. Um, AC electrics are on, and we'll go ground bypass on there. Uh, that was DC. Um, AC electrics are on. Yeah. Okay. All good. Uh, and we can turn the galleys on and the water heaters, so the stewardesses and uh, stewards and whatever can get me a brew because I am actually out. I have not planned that very well, have I? No. Well, never mind. Uh, landing gear lever is Dune. Air conditioning, we're going to request ground air. We're going to uh, turn on the cross bleeds and we'll turn on the packs so the passengers actually have some lovely, lovely air conditioning when they come onto this beautiful beast. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just looking across at the uh, audio levels. That doesn't look too, too bad. Uh, Drain Master is all checked. That's absolutely fine. They should all be off at the moment. Anywho. Right, okay. So we're over to the INSs then. INSs are currently in standby. Uh, so we're going to go remote, remote, and remote. We're going to flick over to pause. I appreciate you're not going to see that, but basically they're, they're all on pause. I'll tell you what I can do, actually. Instrument panel, let's bring up the CDU. So there we go, you can hopefully see that. Uh, if I just move it down a smidge, there we go. So they're all on pause. Um, and the warning light's actually on on all of them. We'll deal with that in a momento. But what we can do is we can do a right click to enter our current position. And actually what is in is is the current position. So that is fine. Uh, just going to change all them to one. Uh, so the current position is in. So now we can swing that round on all three of them to our nav accuracy. Which currently is sat at 95, which is the worst it can be. Uh, 95 on all three there. And you can see here we've got a warning code 006, 006, and that's the same on all three. Uh, you get a load when you spawn in. As you can see, there was loads on there. So I'm just going to clear all those warnings. Because it won't actually align until the warnings have been cleared. So the position is in. And the warnings have been cleared, so now we can turn all of the INSs to align. And because I'm an impatient sausage, I'm going to do the magic click to uh, quick align. And we can see that number dropping now as our nav accuracy is uh, improving. And once it gets to 55 or below, I think it is, we'll get the green light saying nav ready. We'll leave it aligning, we'll see if we can get it all the way down to 05, which is uh, pretty damn good. Um, we just have to make sure that we've turned out of a line mode and into nav when we start the engines because that throws the uh, the accuracy to, to pot. Um, <clears throat> let me just check. I've done all of that jazz. Yes, that is fine. And to be honest, actually, while we're here, we can actually put in our waypoints. So I've turned them all to waypoint. We're all we're on waypoint one, and I need to pull up that view again. So we're on waypoint. Waypoint one is zeros, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so on and so forth. Uh, so what we can do is click the magic screw. EGLL to Larnaca zero one and dot one. So that is the first card. We'll load that in, and because we've got remote highlighted on all three INSs, you'll see it's actually loaded it in, so all three of the INSs. So, you can see down here on that one, and you can see up here on that one, it's actually loaded the coordinates. And, uh, if I just get rid of that, and now if I scroll through the waypoints, you can see there's actually coordinates in there, all the way up to and including seven. And then, when we get there, um, when we're on our way to waypoint 7, we'll then have to load in the next card. 
which will be line of 2, um, and that will load in at 8, 9, then it wraps back around to 1, 2, 3, 4, and however many waypoints are in on that. Um, obviously, we don't want to load that in now, because that will override, as it wraps around, it will override waypoint 1 and so on. And I think we've got 6 cards for this flight, so we just have to remember to do that. Uh, and I am really bad at remembering. Um, so just as a reminder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on 7, which reminds me when we're on leg, it'll be 6 and then 2, 7. Um, so when I see a 7 on here, then we need to load in the next card. That's just the way I like to do it as a uh, memory jogger, and it doesn't normally work because I normally forget. So if we go to the overhead then, following through on the uh, checklist, uh, we can get rid of that panel. Um, throttle masters, uh, we'll go to alternate for now. Seatbelt sign will go on, and no smoking sign will go on as well. Cockpit door is norm, that's fine. Auto throttles uh, switches are already on. Um, and we don't need to do any of that. All of that is good. Take off yet? Yeah, that's fine. Engine control schedule. Right, that's the next one then. So, engine control schedule for departure out of uh, Heathrow is flyover uh, for the noise abatement. Uh, flight reverser arm should be off. I always forget where this one is. No, it's not that one. Not that one either. No, it is this one. Flight reverser arm. Mm. <laughs> this is the one I can never find, as I've just said. Uh, that's for the packs, I think. I'm pretty sure it's not on this page. No, it's not. Oh, it's that button. Yeah, of course it is. It's because it's not a switch. It's a button. That's that's what threw me. It's that white button there. You can see me uh, with the mouse over. Uh, so that should be off, which it is. So that's fine. Uh, flight instruments. Yeah, fine. Whatever. Hydraulics. AC electrics. Uh, all good. Captain's preparation. Uh, steering light on. Yeah, fine. Auto land light should be off, which it is. It's that one up there. Um, auto throttle check, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, tire lights, they're all fine, they're all fine. Radio altimeter is fine. Mac, yeah, flight director, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we'll check the auto throttle, and as you can see, it through the throttles forwards. Flight director is working, yeah, and the auto throttle light, cancel light is working, that's fine too. Um... Air data computers are on with no lights. Good. Flight control inverters are on. Landing lights are retracted. Uh, I'm going to put the de ice and de mist all on now before I forget. So that is slightly out of sync with the checklist, but as you can see it's already fogging up. And that is modelled in this. Uh, Takeoff monitor is down here, that is disarmed, AFCS, that's fine. Um, actually we will key in our subsonic cruise altitude, which is flight level 260. Uh, runway heading, we're going off 27 left I don't know why I went forwards, but never mind. So, 2-7. Uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly on the money. And uh, 280 knots below flight level 100 for us today. Uh, trim wheels. That's a good question. That's a very good question. Trim. 
performance. That's my TLA. Does this even give us? Oh, it does. Minus 2.5. That sounds a bit large. It's right at the bottom. About 2.5. I, I can see the tool tech, but you can't. Right, well, any more is going to put us over the numbers, so over the green bit, so I'm just going to stick it there. It's about minus 1.5 there. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue, to be honest. Windshield wipers couldn't care less. Uh, throttles are all the way back. Uh, reheats are off. They are. Uh, VHF com irrelevant. Uh, transponder. And we'll do the TCAS test. Uh, we'll turn the transponder on before doing the TCAS test. And we should hear TCAS system OK. TCAS system test OK. Lovely. The four start checklist. Cockpit preparation complete. Yet yeah, we've done that. Windows closed. Uh, flight control inverters on. Uh, which they are. So the switch is hidden behind here. They're, they're a bit of a bugger to get at. Um, Q and H would be a good one to put in. Uh, Oh my, oh my, that scrolled quick. 1020, so that puts us at uh, 100 feet. Anti stall uh, can come on, which is behind there, and it is on. Uh, 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 brakes to parking. Good. And the parking brake is right over here. Bit of a bummer to get at. Throttles are idle, I've just checked that. Nav lights are already on, I think we did that uh, ahead of time. Yeah, we did. Uh, and the rotating beacon, or the anti-collision light, as it was called back then, comes on as well. Throttle masters can come on. Oh, they're already on, they're on a line. Uh, on uh, the alternate. And now, the batteries come on. Battery one, battery two. That's the battery is on. INSs then. So if we turn these all the way around, that looks good. That's a zero five, zero five, and zero five. So hopefully you can see that down here. So we've got the best. Uh, alignment we can have. Uh, so what we can do now, and this is the bet you've got to remember, it's a right click. INS is to nav. Uh, we'll be doing a debo start because we we're cold and dark. Waypoints are all in. That's all fine. ASI bugs are set, or they, at least they should be. Yes, they are. Um, there they are. Pitch in this reheat, yeah, clock and everything is all good. Fuel flows should be set as well. So that's the yellow numbers up here. And as you can see, uh, number four engine is slightly lower. That's because it suffered from vibration. Uh, that's at least my understanding. TLA bugs are, uh, yeah, that's all taken care of. I don't have to worry about that. Master warning recall. And that's all fine, and will be cleared when uh, the engines are up and running. So, let's get the engine started. So, packs can come off, cross bleeds will come off, which is a bit weird, but that's, uh, that's what you do. That's all fine. And, uh, oh, galleys and heaters, that's what I was looking for. I knew there was something I needed to press. 
And we will do engine number three start. And now we can see the N2 spinning up when it gets to around about 12%. We'll actually put the fuel in. There's 11, there's 12. Fuel in. Hopefully the EGT, exhaust gas temperature, sorry, down here will shoot up, meaning we've got ignition, which is exactly what it has done there. And I'll just kick my rudder pedals and take the parking brake off. Probably not a good idea. Oh, yeah. So that's number one starting. Uh, very, very low spool speed um, because it's a, a Debo start. So engine number two. 7%. Then in goes the fuel. So now we can turn the bleeds on for one and two. Cross bleeds can come on as well, so we can actually put that air into engines one and four, which is exactly what we want. Uh, Jennies are on. Uh, Jennies for one and two can come on. And we'll lose ground power because we don't need that now. Yes, I know you like your ping pong concord. So I am sort of rushing this checklist but uh, there we go um, and we will push back tail left poke the brakes a few times for it to actually register there we go no, still once there it goes lovely so back we go now I Thing, but I'm not sure that they waited for pushback to complete before starting engines one and four. But I'm impatient. So up with engine four. So now we're not starting with ground air, we're starting with bleed air from two and three. There's ten percent, eleven percent, and that's probably twelve for now. And I did this on the last attempt to push back the wrong way. Because we can cut through there. Oh well, never mind. Oh, in fact, no, we're going off 27, aren't we? Yeah. It's fine. That's engine number four up and uh, up and Adam. So finally, engine numero uno. Ten percent, eleven percent, twelve percent. We'll stop the pushback there and apply the parking brake. Let's start a cutout. You might have just heard that. We'll turn the Jennies on for one and four. Shed and galley heaters can come back on again now. Hydraulics can go on for green and blue. Yellow stays on auto. And we can see we're in the green on all three. Lovely job. Cross bleeds come off. One and four bleeds go on. Packs can come back on for taxi. Brake fans come on. Right, I'm, I'm clearly uh, just jumping through here. And we're on, oh, we're on low idle already for, for taxi as well. PFC. What's the PFC moaning about?
Oh, is it just because we're not we're not turned on yet? Um, so reset the warnings on these. We'll go to. Oh, in fact, I'll, I'll tell you what. No, I'll show you what these switches do. So if we look at the flight controls, we're currently on N and red. Red normally means bad. And this will show you the yellow ones. So full up. Chugger, 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 chugger. Full down. See how slow and sluggish that is. Neutral. Full left. Left goes up. Full right. Very slow and sluggish. This is the mechanical system. And rudder is at the top. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Very, very slow and sluggish. Now then, if I take us off of mechanical power and put hydraulic power in, we use the green system. So now we can see it's green and a G for green. Oops. Full left, full right. Look how much more responsive that is. Up, down. That's fairly typical. Hydraulics are more responsive than the mechanical servos. And then we'll also check the blue system. So there's blue. And as you can see, it's blue with the letter B. And this should be exactly the same. Yeah, ha happy with that. And uh, we'll roll with the green system. So now we can flick on the... Uh, Artificial feel, stabilizers, trim, so on and so forth. That's all of these buttons up here. And that's all good. And now the PFC is not moaning at us. So now on the recall, we don't have any warnings. We'll turn the tax key lights on. Uh, is there anything more I need to do up top? Uh, Yes, drain masters come on, static heaters come on, and ADS heaters come on. Lovely jubbly. So now we're good to tax key. So here's the party piece. Down comes the nose. Oops, sorry. Just down one notch. Doesn't need to be down much. Don't know why we're bouncing so much, but oh yeah. Excuse me, oh, I just double check my checklist, make sure I have actually done all the things that I said I should do. Eyes and nose brakes are good, lights are good, demist is good, lights are fine, no flags yet, yeah, that's good. Um, flight director can come on. Trims are set, throttle master's checked. Ah, Throttle Master needs to go to the other position now. I don't know why that is. But anyway, it says it on the thing. Um, Drain Master, Pressure Static, ADS and Standby Heaters are all on. We did that. Engine Control Schedule is on Flyover. Um, number 4 Engine Limiter needs to come on. Uh, to 88%, so that reduces the power of the number 4 engine. Uh, packs are on, bleeds are on, temperatures are good, takeoff CFG switch is good, anti skid is good, the FDIS is set. on that. Uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, 
Ah, my sticky toe brakes. I'm not the best at taxiing, as you know. <laughs> it doesn't help when the tools I'm using are uh, not well maintained either. It just compounds the issue. Oh, stop the clock. I need to start the clock. Always blooming forget the blooming clock. There we go. And here we are coming up to a runway 27 left. So landing lights go on, cockpit door gets locked, give the cabin crew a few chimes, that didn't actually chime did it? No, it's not having any of it. Transponder can go to TARA, uh, which is that one. Again, not that it matters, we're uh, offline. Round idle switches go to high. So that's these two. So we'll high idle. Check Debo. Debo is still on, so we'll take Debo off. Uh, you're supposed to wait a period of time. Oh, it's already disengaged it anyway. Just the switches didn't flick for some reason. Uh, Takeoff monitor will get armed, that's that button there. Uh, lights are all on, that's fine. Quick check of recall and we're good. Reheat will go on. So, click, 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 click for all four engines. And flight director is checked and all good. So we're all good to line up. Oh, speed for Concorde 1582, runway 27 left, line up and wait. I watch this for a line up. Should I turn yet? Should I turn yet? Should I turn yet? Probably. That was probably too early, actually, if anything. Almost over the grass, is what the Concord pilots said they used to do. Look, we're coming. We're coming on to the centre line. Are we going to be to the left or to the right? If you did that in an Airbus, you would be over. <laughs> you'd be over the right hand side. And after that, almost over the grass, we're actually to the left of the centre line. Would you believe? Absolutely bonkers, isn't that? Bonkers. Uh, so we're going to want heading hold, pitch hold. Um. Initially, and then we'll go to IAS hold, and so on and so forth. Everything's good up there. We are ready. So here we go. Sort my sticky brakes out. Three, two, one. Now slam the throttles forwards. On come the reheats. Up we go, watch the tail strike. Just hold the attitude. Positive rate. Gear up. Two forty knots. Three, two, one. 
noise. And that was a forgot to pull back a little bit more. So three, two, one noise, the reheats go off. As you can see, we're already at 250 knots, which is just nuts. And I'll tell you what, we're just gonna go straight onto INS. So throttles come back a little bit, we're on IES hold. And we want to be around about 90% I think on the throttles. Just got to make sure we don't lose our rate of climb. Still climbing like a monster, so I'll bring the throttles back a little bit more. Just helps with um, noise abatement. So nose can come up, we don't really need to see where we're going now. Taxi lights off. Master warning, checks, no warnings. Gear is up, no lights. And now we're up and about, smoking sign comes off. And visor is up and locked. Fantastic. Uh, we're coming up to 5,000 feet. IS acquire, let's get ourselves up to 280 knots indicated. The aircraft now has control of uh, throttles and the autopilot. So, important in Concorde, you use the same. So, auto throttle 1, flight director 1, and autopilot 1. You don't mix. And that, apart from the fact I forgot to pull up, so we were a little bit low on the uh, initial climb out. But, um, yeah, not too bad. Past flight level 100 now, so we'll go over to standard pressure, 1013, and landing lights can come off.
There we go. Click the right button. And we're on climb power, that's fine. Brake fans can come off now if the temperatures are good. Yeah, they'll be fine. Flight deck door can go to normal. Oh. Come on. I'll leave the seatbelt signs on just for a moment. Just until our attitude is reduced a bit. So I'm just going to uh, manually do that. Yeah, let me bring the nose down. And now we're over flight level uh, 100, we can speed up as well. Beautiful. And climbing up to our subsonic cruise. Very inefficient in this bird, and we'll we'll talk a little bit about that when we get there. And then compare it to when we get to our supersonic cruise leg uh, after flying past Venice. And we're on way to our uh, first waypoint. If you look at the INS, 0 to 1. So 0 was our initial position. Uh, and 1, I think, was Dover. Shot that a bit. What a sensible climb rate. Just to help our uh, fuel flow a little. a bit better. And now we're actually up and got a little bit of air speed. You can see our centre of gravity is coming back. We started at 53.5%, uh, which would have been around about here-ish. And now we're back at almost 55%. And when we're supersonic, it'll be right back here, sort of nearest, nearer 58%. And then when we decelerate, we'll pump fuel forwards to bring the CFG back forwards again as the flight dynamics change. 
way of thinking about it. It's a, it's not a great analogy, but sort of uh, makes a bit more sense. Is we know in a normal aircraft you want your centre of gravity ahead of the centre of pressure. Um, so that if you stall, it causes the nose to drop, and then you gain airspeed. Um, loosely speaking, that's what what we want. Um, but supersonic, it's it's different. If you think it's more like a rocket. You don't want the centre of gravity on the nose of a rocket. It would be like trying to balance a broom on your hand, but with the broom head, the heavy bit, at the top. Much harder than if you spin it round and have the broom part on your hand and the pokey up stick bit that isn't got, hasn't got much weight uh, at, at the top. And it's much easier to balance it like that. So the flight dynamics flip in supersonic flight. You actually want the C of G back. Um, but then, of course, you need to decelerate out of supersonic at the other end. So then you need to flip it back round again. Uh, so fuel is being pumped around on Concorde all the time uh, to balance things and, and modify the balance depending on what stage of the flight we're in because the requirements change quite significantly. Hmm. So 56 tonnes of fuel, that looks pretty good, and we're almost over Dover now, if I can pan, there we go, the White Cliffs, oh yeah, we can just see the White Cliffs there, just see a little bit of it, we'll see it once we've gone past, we'll be able to look back. So we're almost at the, at the Cliffs of Dover. We're already doing 380 knots, and we're at flight level 230. <laughs> this thing goes up like stink. She really does go. And I've been deliberately actually on a much gentler uh, climb than I ordinarily would do in Concorde, just to try and save a little bit of fuel. I'm really, really conscious of running out again. I'm wasting another four and a half hours. In fact, it's not that long, actually. It's only about three and a bit hours in Concord. So we could go a bit faster, but we're limited by our Mach number. Um, obviously we need to be below Mach 1 when we're over Europe and, and land and populated areas. We actually want to be a good bit below Mach 1 because we know the air accelerates over the top surface of the wing. So even if we're subsonic, that air accelerating could actually break the sound barrier and cause a shockwave. So we need to make sure that actually that the air that accelerates around the various surfaces of the aircraft is staying subsonic so that means we need to be a good bit below but around about Mach 0 0.9293 is pretty much your limit uh, it's a bit touch and go Altitude um, but in, Co in Concorde we can do that in other air airliners with a more typical configuration that is actually lower uh, because they have a thicker wing which causes more acceleration we have a big delta wing that's quite thin, so it's it's not so much of an issue for us. The air doesn't actually accelerate that much compared to like an A380 that has quite a thick section, so the air really does accelerate over that. Uh, but they have super what's called supercritical airfoils anyway, uh, which is where the airfoil where it's allowed to um, let the airflow go supersonic on the top surface of the wing. Uh, yeah, it's called supercritical. It's it's right on the borderline, effectively. Um, interesting stuff. Re read up on it if you if you're interested in supercritical stuff. Uh, high speed aerodynamics is absolutely not my forte at all. I really did not enjoy it. I find it very very interesting uh, at uni, but um, I wasn't particularly good at it and didn't really care for it too much. A lot, a lot of very complex maths.
So there we are. We're in out hold now. We're on INS. We're now past Dover, so this is automatically incremented. We're on waypoints one to two now. So if we look back, we should see the white cliffs somewhere behind all those trees. And the huge lag spike again. There we go. It's an auto save. I, I've figured out what the lag spikes are now. I just haven't fixed it yet. And you can see some quite nice effects here, actually. If I do that, can you see this? Oh, it's just gone now. Oh, that's where it changes. But can you see this vortex that's going down the wing and the condensation? Basically, the air moving over the wing is faster, which reduces its pressure. And if you reduce its pressure, then water is more likely to condense out of the air. And this is just a cloud forming because of that air condensing over the wing, uh, because we've reduced its pressure so much. I wasn't actually expecting to see that in cruise, but there we go. So here we are, flight level 260, round about Mach 0.901. And I didn't start this, ah, oh, bummer. Uh, what was what's our distance to go? 16664 six, 1660, oh, that's close enough for me. So now, if we go to no, not I can never flipping work this thing. And it's just completely reset what I keyed in. Oh, you suck. Well, anyway, there we are. And there's the passenger's uh, view of the whole thing. 690 miles an hour. A lovely, nice and warm 12 degrees outside. That's... Uh, 26,000 feet. Back point nine oh one. Bit of a turn. Means we must have uh, jumped onto the next waypoint. Yeah, so we're keeping an eye out for waypoint seven and we'll load the next card in at position eight. And turn that one to eight. And this one to eight in preparation. So if a load of waypoints are very close together, obviously that, that can tick over quite, quite fast. Jolly good. Right, yeah, so we want to cruise around about 0.95, actually. And we're probably not going to get there at this altitude. What's our C of G? We're over 55%. We want to be about 55%. So how... So we're actually a touch too high. So I'll drop us down a smidge. It should... Yep, 
reduce our sea of... Uh, actually, that might be the wrong way round. Trying to remember which way, whether you need to go higher or need to go lower to move your C of G and uh, the, the effects on the Mach number. Well, we'll learn together here. So I'll drop us two flight levels, 20 flight levels, sorry. Keep everything else the same and we'll see what changes on the numbers. Realistically, we want to be as high as we can, um, but if we're too high, because we're, you know, moderately heavy, um, we'll struggle. Right, I'm going to have to bring our speed down a bit. And then we'll level out at flight, Altitude alert, 1000 to go. flight level 240. Let's see if we can get our speed back up so it's keeping as much as I can the same. I think it's dropping our Mach number. But it's all still moving and everything's changing at the moment. Yeah, it is. We want to go the other way. Well, I'll let us get there first. We'll just confirm confirm what we think, and then then we'll correct again. It's not an issue. Nav accuracy is still very, very good, so we don't have to worry about a DME update yet. Just show you how we do that. So as this nav accuracy gets worse over time, which it does, we'll hit a point where it will be so inaccurate that we need to do something about it. And we can. And we can actually improve the accuracy in flight using uh, a VOR that has... Uh, distance measuring equipment DME on it. We can do some clever stuff. Let's bring our speed back up to 385 indicated. And there's flight level 240 now, so we are straight and level. 385, near enough. Our C of G, if it's moved, it's actually moved more back, which is not what we wanted. And our Mach number has definitely reduced to about 0 0.89, 0 0.90, something like that. So we do actually want to go a bit higher for more efficient. And, and this is really, really important because if we look at our fuel flow here, we're at what? 5.4-ish tonnes per hour on each engine. That's quite high. But remember that number, because we'll look at this again when we're in supersonic. About 5 and a bit tonnes per hour. So let's go up to flight level 280. But we're going west. So we, we actually want to be... Sorry, we're going east, so we want to be on an odd flight level anyway. We'll go Alta Choir. And up we go. Look how slowly this progress bar is moving. Even though we're going faster than a normal airliner would be. Yeah, it, it, it's quite slow. This is, of course, linear. So, at around about this point, we'll suddenly increase our speed by about three or fourfold. Uh, we'll be going a lot, lot faster. Because um, we'll be able to go supersonic. So then this bit will move really, really fast. So... So there we go.
Alrighty, oh, so yeah, we're making good progress. We're on waypoint three to four on the first card. Um, we're climbing up to point level two nine zero because we should have been on an odd flight level. That was my mistake. And we'll see what that does to our Mach number. In fact, we can see our Mach number is 0.96, which is a smidge fast. But we'll we'll get to height, level out, and so on and so forth, and then uh, sort it all out. But it looks like this is roughly where we want to be. Centre of gravity is still a bit far back, to be honest. But as long as our elevon angle isn't too bad. Which it's around about 0.5 down, which is absolutely fine. As long as it's not more than uh, 2.5 down, I think. And then you're starting to get like really high drag. So we'll bring our speed down a bit. So let's see, we're getting dangerously close to Mach 1 there. So 380's 0.96. And about 375. Will that be 0.95? If we get it to 0.95, I can just do mat cold then, I think. Yeah, 375 knots looks uh, pretty good. So we'll do mat cold. Now, is that going to round us up? I think it is. Right, actually, I don't want to do Matt Cold then. So 375 knots it is. Lovely jubbly. Giving us a ground speed, 577 knots. Which is, in miles an hour, 660. Oh, it's close. <laughs> So here we are, tanking it over Belgium, I think we are now. Uh, and really, I should get my charts up. You can see our attitude. We are quite nose up. Because we're flying so slow for Concorde. It's, it's just not happy. And our fuel flow is what? Yeah, just a smidge over 5 tonnes per engine per hour. Not very good at all. So let me just sort out my charts. From file, select. You throw to Larnaca. There we are. So where are we at the moment? Uh, what world map? Bastone just coming into Luxembourg actually that we're more or less on the border but the border's probably that river and yeah <laughs> let's look the other way while the scenery sorts itself out I, I've had to massively cut down on the scenery and everything just to be able to do this flight i've got a few other tricks i haven't tried yet um, which I'll, I'll give a go for when we come to do the return flight So the other thing we can look at when it loads, there we go, let's have a look at the intakes. 
so at the moment you can see the intakes are completely open uh, there's free passage of air into the uh, into all four of the engines now if we look here we can see where it says danger and the same on this engine over here these are the what are called the ramps now these are hinged at the front and then we'll come down at the back like that at the moment they are in the fully open position so the air is just going straight in what we'll see when we go supersonic is these ramps will start dropping and it looks like it constricts the airflow going into the engine that's not actually what it's doing what it's doing is when we go supersonic a shock wave will be formed here on the entry to the engine and as you pass through the shock wave the pressure reduces of the air sorry increases but the speed reduces um, of the air and that's good because these turbines you can see spinning at the back will not operate if the air is supersonic but we're going to be flying at Mach 2 so by creating a shock wave at the front of the engine we can slow the air down so the air going into the engine is actually subsonic quite interesting but as we increase our speed this shock wave will move back and it moves back and back and back until the point where it's actually inside the engine and therefore the air hitting the engine will be supersonic now that wouldn't actually be the bad thing but a shock wave inside the engine would be a bad thing um, so the two things combined would be a very bad thing so by moving this ramp down that actually pushes the shock wave forwards brings it out of the engine so as we increase our speed we move the ramp down to keep the shock wave in the same place so as we go faster the shock wave wants to come back but by moving the ramp down we push it back forwards so we can control exactly where the shock wave is and that's what the ramps will do and when we're supersonic we'll see that and this will be really really interesting to look at we can also see that the secondary nozzles or the buckets are fully open as well um, and these will change when we go supersonic um, these buckets will actually constrict slightly and again that's because we'll get a shock wave coming out of the engine because the air needs to be coming out of the engine faster than the air around it to give us any thrust uh, so we need to create another shock wave by accelerating the air out of the back of the engine because we can't accelerate it in the engine beyond supersonic it, it can't operate supersonic so we accelerate it through the nozzle uh, just like pinching the end of a hose pipe the water comes out faster exactly the same thing here creates a shock wave on the uh, exit nozzle but this time it actually accelerates the air coming out of the back of the engine uh, so it comes out faster and we'll see that and there's some stuff we've got to do when we go transonic um, where we'll we have to check these positions because obviously as a pilot you can't just stick your head out the window and look at the ramp no we've got dials and gauges where we can see that uh, and I might as well show you those now so these are the secondary nozzles so these are the buckets at the back and they're currently at 8.9 degrees you can't see the tool tip on that unfortunately and then on the ramps um, helps if I look at the right thing it's that one move it away from where my head is uh, and these are the ramps uh, here and we can see it's at the 12 o'clock position which is zero degrees so I the ramps are not in effect at all and we'll have a look at how that changes when we go supersonic So we're already through Luxembourg and out the other side, and now we're on. Uh, now we're in West Germany, Saarbrücken. Uh, sort of coming up towards Heidelberg, Frankfurt. Sort of off to our ten o'clock. Probably won't see it. It's a bit too cloudy, but Frankfurt sort of down there somewhere. Uh, but the way I've got the scenery, we definitely won't see it. And then um, off on the nose, 
uh, in the distance, about 80 or so miles, probably 100 miles, is Stuttgart. Hmm. So, right, I'm going to give you some cinematics and I'm going to go and put the kettle on. So, as Clive would say, one moment, please.
still straight and level. Yeah. Six to seven. Right, okay. We need to load the next card in. PDQ. Instrument panel. Uh, card two. Load. Before it starts doing a 360, which it's just... It's going to start. Panic over. Right, so now if we look at waypoint seven... Remember, waypoint 8 was all zeros. Uh, so waypoint 7, 49, 7. And now waypoint 8's got some numbers in it. Waypoint 0 is our start position. And now waypoint 1 is not near our start position anymore because it's our new, it's our waypoint 10 effectively now. And that should take us a right turn towards um, sort of Munich, which is what it looks like it's doing. Lovely jubbly. Right, quick check of everything. Mac.95 is good. Flight level 29 is zero. Renovates 375 knots. Fuel flow still around about 5 tonnes per engine. Which is disgustingly high. And our nav accuracy is, well, our INS is at 24. Is that the same on all three? It should be. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, while, while we're in subsonic, let's do a DME update. We don't need to. With 24 is still absolutely fine. But uh, let's let's do one for for a good bit of practice. So. What we can do is, because we know where certain things are on the ground, and we know for definite where those things are. What on earth is it trying to do? Oh, no, we're all right. And um, we know where those things are. What we can do is we can say to the INS, right, where do you think that thing is? And then we can tell it actually where it is, so therefore it knows what its error is. It's like, well, hang on, I don't think it's exactly there. But you've told me it's exactly there, so I can now adjust my knowledge and correct the error. And that's what we do. When we use VOR, uh, VORs that have got a DME on them. So we're actually going to overfly. In fact, the next waypoint is Kempton uh, in South Germany. So and that's on 108.4. So if we dial in 108.4, and we'll just do it on both, just for uh, just for giggles. 108.4, and we can see that that's popped up on the DME down here, 84 miles away and closing. What is the INS doing here? You know what? I'm just going to skip that waypoint because it's having a field day. Uh, waypoint change. Oh, we'll save. Sip of tea. Not cool enough yet. Waypoint change 7, 8, insert. There we go. Should have a better time doing that. Yeah, it is right. We're, we're fine on that now. Okay, so yeah, we picked up this DME. We know where that DME is. So what we can do is we'll put why is it turning left? Right, whatever, Concord, you do you. Um, so we'll put this into DME update mode. 
so seven nine and we'll stick it in DME waypoint one why not good as any now Kempton I have the coordinates here uh, is north 47 44 huh, 44 4 insert and then east 10 20 59 which is 6 insert uh, elevation is actually significant so elevation is two and a half thousand feet and then we'll do waypoint change one insert Ooh. And what we can see is 52 miles there. Yeah, so the accuracy is quite far off, actually. Why are we flopping all over the shop here? do you Concord and it's not happy with that forty seven oh hang on forty seven forty four four ten twenty six Not happy with that VOR. 1084. Why are we moving away from the waypoint? Something's gone very balky with the nav. See what? Let's uh, do it on the pop up. So DME mode. So north. Forty seven, forty four, four, east, ten, twenty, 
59 which rounds up. Let's go with 5. Waypoint change, 1, enter. That should flash and then it should flick over to 1 when it's actually got a lock. Which is normally pretty immediate. So it doesn't like that VOR. There's a good chance it doesn't exist in FSX or it's the wrong... Oh no, in fact no, because we've got it there. Oh, I don't know. Let's try a different one. Let's do 1175. Hundred and seventy miles away. No, I'm not I'm less convinced on that one. One three four is Vicenza. I don't think we'll be in range of that. Oh we are. Right, so Vicenza is north, 45, 38, 1, east, 11, 40, 3, insert, a point change six enter. There we go. Right, it's liked that one. 151 miles, 151 miles verified on the DME down there. Near enough. So now we'll come out of DME mode. So our nav accuracy is 34, as you can see there. That should start reducing. The number will reduce, which means our accuracy is increasing. It's, it's getting better. We want that to be as small a number as possible. 34 is perfectly fine. Yes, and the moment that we've done that, it's now... The INS has sorted itself out. I can see on the moving map, which is a bit cheaty, I know. But it's now turning towards where we should be going. still increasing uh, right I'll tell you what I want to do is Vicenza we actually should fly over 4538 right which waypoint is that not even on that card so right okay well this is uh, this is an easy fix why is that not actually spinning my thing Go to Radnav. That's to the right. And we'll go straight to Vicenza and then re pick up the flight plan from there. 
really weird. It's now I've never had that issue with the Seaver INS before. I clearly did something wrong, but I don't know what it was. So we'll turn rough heading of where we want to be, and then we'll just set a track straight to, uh, sorry, a radial straight to Vicenza. In fact, I can go Vorlock now. Why is it turning right? Sorry, left. Something's gone very weird with the flight control. Well, whatever, we'll get back on track. Um, so since we're chinning off the INS for the moment we'll stick those all on waypoint one we'll load the next card and we'll look for Vicenza because I haven't actually got it written down which card waypoint uh, is which so loading card three And we're looking for 45.38. That one. 11.40. That's my six. Right, so is that. It's just in a slightly different place. So, it'll be waypoint eight we'll be doing. So, waypoint change 8 to 9 inserts. Waypoint change 8 to 9 inserts. Because waypoint 8, as we're seeing here, is the Kenza. 8 to 9 insert. So, once we get to the Kenza, then we can go back to INS. So Vorlock, it's almost due south of us, which is nice. There we go. So we're flying a radial, 185. There's an inbound radial, of course. So that's 5 degrees as an outbound from Vicenza. Vicenza's on the flight plan. We're doing a DME update to Vicenza, and look, here we go. So we were at 34. The nav accuracy's increased. So our accuracy's increased, i.e. the number has gone down. Hello, Pip. Which is a good ting. And it's not very long after Vicenza, not very long at all after Vicenza, that we can uh, speed up. So our mark number is 0.95 still, which is good. That's what we like. Our fuel flow, around about 5 tonnes, give or take. As we are now coming over Austria. What a huge diversion we did there. But we should be about 50 or, mm, 40 or 50 miles to the right of our uh, starboard wing. So it's not not horrendous uh, bit of weird nav that went on there. And actually, we should recognise this valley. Because down yonder is Innsbruck. I think it is that valley as well. I think Innsbruck's down there. You might even see it. There it is. There's Innsbruck. So, there's your reference point. So we pretty much flew over Rattenberg.
So there's uh, Rasu Geography for you, so it gives you an idea of where we are as we're coming over the Alps now. Oh, that's not the view I thought it was going to give me. There we go, lovely. And finally, this number's coming down. So distance, time. So 108 miles to the waypoint, which in this case is actually waypoint 9. 107 miles, uh, and it's about 11 minutes away. And as we can see, we're 93 miles from Vicenza, which is waypoint 8. So, you know, it makes it 7 plus 5 miles is that leg so we should be all good to um flick over to ins again which is good i don't know why it was being funny genuinely don't we've burned a third of our fuel already but uh Closer to a half, actually. A little bit scary. Um, but yeah, fuel flow. Five tonnes a minute per engine. It's huge. Does not like flying subsonic. Do it, as you can see. It will happily do it. But it's not efficient. Even remotely. So, 80 miles to Vicenza. We are chewing up the miles pretty quick. What's our ground speed? 561 knots. We've got a headwind. No, crosswind, 45, 42 knots. Uh, from the west. Oh, I can't wait for us to go supersonic. <laughs> Just to get that fuel burned down and... Uh, the... I don't want to run out of fuel again. <laughs> Getting that. 70 miles to Vicenza. And we can actually see water... And that's where we'll be going. We'll be we'll be swinging a left fairly shortly. Uh, out towards Venice, which is down here somewhere. And uh, we don't quite overfly Venice, but we fly just to the side of it. So we'll actually be able to look down and see the uh, horrific autogen. Because I've got the settings down so low. Oh. Bit of old grey. Nice. <coughs> hmm. Sorry, just one tabbing out a bit. So you see the um, flight tracker along the top. So black is your progress, white is still to go. And uh, that will start moving pretty quickly, very, very shortly. 60 miles to Vicenza, and it's not far, as I say, it's around about the same distance again from us to Vicenza, out the other side, before we uh, give it the beans. So, I would say five minutes, something like that, as a guess. So 
So yeah, not a much to see. Sorry, the cruise is just dull. <laughs> Supersonic cruise, sorry, subsonic cruise, especially dull. Supersonic, bit more interesting. Few things I can show you on that, and we can talk about. Um, but yeah, subsonic. It's any other airliner, just with huge fuel burn. To be honest. Now, what I didn't look at, actually, is when we'll need to load the next card in. So we're on, we'll be going 8 to 9. Forty-five, forty-five. that's back home, 45, 45, 44. So it's at that, so that is an old waypoint. So it'll be on two to three, we'll be loading in the next card. And there's quite a few waypoints um, right close together on this, actually. Here we are, very close to the Kenza now. We're going to heading hold shortly because the VOR will drop out. Then we'll flick everything over to the INS, check that the flight director is showing the right thing, and then we'll uh, give the autopilot the INS to navigate on, and we should be back on course then. So over the Italian Alps now, coming uh, not far off coming out of the Alps. And say Venice is down here somewhere. Right about there, I think. Something like that. We'll see it. We're going to overfly it more or less. So 30 miles to go to Vicenza. So I'm going to take heading hold now. We'll flick over to INS. And then I'm pretty much going to wait for us to be over the top of Vicenza, which is where we would be if we were on the INS, um, when it flicks from waypoint 7 to 8, so 8 to 9. If that made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll know when we're over the top because the VOR will fall over. And we've seen that in my previous videos for when we did VOR navigation. But the DME is just an added bonus, it, it tells us what's going on.
eight miles. Five miles. And over to INS Nav, and that's a left turn, which is what I want. And whether we've actually got the turning circle to make this left turn before the waypoint, we'll see. I'll just uh, cheat and keep an eye on the moving map. Oh yeah, not too bad. Twelve miles to go to waypoint nine. Just keeping an eye on everything, just to make sure that the INS is back in the uh, game. Which it absolutely seems to be. There's Venice down there, right at the left window. Six miles to waypoint nine. And there we go, it's actually taken it and flicked us over onto uh, the next leg as well. So it looks like the INS has uh, sorted itself out. Well, we've sorted it out, so that is great news. So we're going to need a checklist in a few moments. And this will be the Transonic checklist. So a few bits we can do right away. So secondary nozzles need to be less than 15 degrees. I can see the tooltip, you can't. But 3 o'clock position is 20. Where they are at the moment looks like it's around about 9. When I'm chatting rubbish, apparently it's 6. 6.5 degrees, but anyway, that, that is fine. That's where we want it to be. <clears throat> And we're not quite over the water yet, but we are we are very, very close. You can see that's where we'll exit over the water. There's Venice down there. Venice Airport. So remember, the thing I want you to remember, or the things I want you to remember, fuel flow, we're in about 5, 5.1 tonnes an hour per engine. Ramps, fully open, no constriction whatsoever. And buckets, not quite fully open, a little bit closed. But not too bad. They're the three things. And of course our grain speed you can see it uh, at the bottom of your screen there. Uh, but just to prove I'm not, there's nothing funky going on. Around about 680 not, uh, miles an hour, sorry. Mac 
Oh, you can actually. Oh, okay. Right. So for transonic, you need to use the reheats to accelerate you up. I thought you always had to use all four reheats. You can actually just do it with two and save a bit of fuel. You might give that a go just to save a bit of fuel. So we're only using two reheats. Oh, shoot. Told you the uh, waypoints were close together. So it's doing a circle now. Uh, four. Load. Every time. Every time with INSs I do this. There we go, we're fine. Although, ironically, just because it's done that left turn, that has actually put us out to, over the water a little bit quicker. So I'm going to increase our airspeed to 400 knots. Which will probably actually push us through transonic. I'm going to wait for wings level, actually. There's Mac 1 and we've not lit the burners yet. That's nuts. Right, the INS has figured itself out. Excellent. Right, okay, so what we do now, we go into pitch hold. We're just going to wait for the vertical, uh, for the airspeed to increase a smidge. Bit of a wind buffet. And now we light the burners in symmetric pairs and one pair at a time basically to re reduce the, the bump felt by the passengers and we're going to set flight level 600 Alta Choir. And we want to maintain around about 400 knots indicated. Oh, and start the chrono. So we're allowed to have the burners on up to 15 minutes. But we, we actually, we don't want them on that long. Because we won't have the fuel for it. So let's see if we can get away with just having two burners on which significantly reduces the fuel flow so if you have a look the two inboard burners are on and we're burning twice the amount of fuel on those two engines in the meantime we can uh, do the mac 1 checklist so on the overhead all the heaters come off well i say all the heaters pressure, pressure static comes off uh, engine anti-ice would come off if it was on 
and then the windscreen heaters and demist and everything all comes off. The nose is about to get quite hot from the friction of the air, so we don't want heaters on as well. And now we're on the barber pole, we can set max climb, which will basically keep the aircraft on the barber pole, so the fastest it can possibly go. And we'll just climb up to flight level 600, whether we get there or not, don't know, don't care. But we'll just be in a steady, gradual climb now. Um, once we actually get a little bit faster, we'll be in a cruise climb. Yeah, we're struggling getting through that, so I am going to light the other burners. Press the right button. some reason the buttons aren't working so do it the old-fashioned way there we go all four burners on so now we're on the barber pole though we can't really go any faster but what that will do is increase our altitude which will allow the barber pole to move so we are burning quite a bit of fuel now but we should be okay center of gravity warning Look how our centre of gravity is coming back. I'm not too worried. It's right at the aft. Um, but this bracket is going to move, continue moving backwards as we accelerate. So the flight engineer is just a little bit ahead of time. Nearly 4,000 feet a minute at flight level 380. <laughs> it's nuts. Absolutely bonkers. Yes, I know the CFG. The flight engineer's doing it. It's fine. What you moaning? Oh, have I still got the seatbelt signs on? Whoopsies. Yeah. Rapidly approaching flight level 400. Not many other planes can climb that fast uh, at this altitude. Making easy work of it. Mach 1.4. So we can check the secondary nozzles and the intakes. So the secondary nozzles uh, are almost closed now. In fact, they are closed. Sorry, open, fully open, zero degrees. And the intake ramps should be moving now. Um, if I click the right thing, which is that one. And we can see the ramps is no longer at the 12 o'clock position. It's 18.6 degrees and closing. So let's have a look. Well, there's the buckets fully open, the reheat's on. And we can see these ramps are starting to come down. See the. Oh, you, you might have actually just see it move a notch there. Hopefully you can see that. These ramps are coming down. There would be a shock wave here. It's just not rendered. And it's just maintaining that shock wave right on the intake here. If it was rendered, it would look really cool. But there you go. You can see them coming down. And we're rapidly approaching Mach 1.7, at which point the reheats will come off. And actually the virtual flight engineer uh, will do that for us. So can press this button, sorry. Press this button. Oh, Chewy's on. There we go. And they come off in pairs. Again, just to stop or reduce the, the sudden wallop 
uh, for the passengers so they don't uh, spill their GNT. Very important. So reheats are off. AFCS set at six, uh, flight level 600. Alt acquire. Hello. Alt acquire and we turn on auto throttle 1. We turn on auto throttle 1, notice, without actually selecting Mac hold or IAS hold or anything like that. Which is interesting. C of G, yeah, it's coming back, it's fine. Told you she likes to ping pong at you. At 1.75. And hopefully... Completely silent. Because it's moving faster than the sound it makes. I will never tire of that noise. Boom, boom. Just do that again. That sounds so good with good speakers. Two shock waves. You've got the bow shock off the nose. And then uh, probably the second one would actually be off the wings. Leading edge of the wings. Uh, so, yeah, that's why there's two booms. There's more than one shock wave going on. So the bow shock, you can think of it just like the wave in front of a boat. Exactly the same thing. It's just different dynamics. Uh, but it's the same principle. Um, and then if you stuck your hand out of the side of the boat into the water, it would get its own little bow wave. Yeah, that's what we've got on the wings. That's your second boom. So that's that's the sort of loose analogy. So we're still accelerating, still climbing. So bear that in mind. Fuel flow. Just a smidge over five tons a minute. So it's more or less, yeah, give or take a few hairs, the same as when we were subsonic. However. This time, we're going twice as fast. <laughs> so we're going to be burning that for half the amount of time. We're starting to get into Concord's territory where she likes to be. And bearing in mind, we're still full throttle climbing and accelerating. And we're burning the same amount of fuel as when we were in straight and level cruise before. Uh, we can kill the chrono now, actually. So we don't need that now. The reheats are off. And now you should see this bar, the, the, the progress bar I've got on the overlay. You should see that starts to move considerably quicker than it has done uh, to, to date, as it were. Yes, I know the flight engineer is a bit keen on the C of G. I don't care. It's fine. It's close enough. But look, look at that, actually, just to sort of uh, bang the drum a little bit. Look how far back our C of G is now. Remember when we took off, it was here, 53. So that's how different it is, how the flight dynamics, well the aerodynamics are different um, when you are supersonic versus subsonic. Significant difference. So we're on the barber pole. For Mac and indicated. We're still climbing just. I guess we're probably a little bit heavy, which is why our rate of climb is a bit slow. 
So we can't go any faster. We want to hit Mach 2. Um, we will hit Mach 2. But we just can't go any faster until we're a little bit higher. We'll get there. Flight level 500. We, we should be able to do Mach 2 then at that height. Want a coffee? So yeah, so now, just to prove it, reheats are off, yet we are supersonic and accelerating. We only need the reheats to get us through the same barrier, because there's a huge amount of drag at Mach 1, at and around Mach 1. But once you are through that, the drag reduces. It's uh, often referred to as the wall, the Mach wall. So... Getting through Mach 1 takes a lot of energy, but once you're past it, you're fine. Uh, that drag drops off significantly and you can reduce all your power again. And equally, same happens when we come the other way. As soon as we reduce speed, when we get close to Mach 1, the drag goes through the roof. But then when we're significantly below Mach 1, about 0.95, something like that... Um, the drag reduces again, so it's, it's like hitting a wall. And you have to be ready for it, and you have to take it into account. So again, fuel flow, 0.53 per engine. Still high, still high, don't get me wrong, it's high. But we're going a lot quicker. So I can put up with it, because we're going to be burning it for a fewer number of minutes, because we're going so much faster. Still climbing, just not by a lot. Flight level 480 now. As we're coming about halfway down Italy. Uh, the other side, sorry. So about halfway down Italy. And we probably can even see the boot. There's the heel of the boot, is down there somewhere. And then off to our port side, that's... Um, Slovenia? Ah, so don't know. We're not we're not quite as far down as uh, Greece yet. Greece is sort of on the nose-ish. Yeah, we're as fast as we can possibly go. But we're certainly not as high as we can go. So we, we can still climb just. We're just managing a bit of climb whilst maintaining speed. C of G's actually gone out of bounds. So I don't know what the flight engineer is playing at. I'm sure he'll uh, catch up. Let's have a look at the ramps. You can see now, see these ramps, how far down they are? Absolutely hauling now. Hauling the proverbial ass. And once we actually get to Mach 2, the engines will be able to throttle back a bit and our fuel flow will go down. And what we should do, just to spoil the surprise, is at Mach 2, and uh, a steady climb and cruise climb, um, our fuel burn will be lower than it was in subsonic cruise. 
So we're burning less fuel to go about three times quicker. Or two and a half times quicker. Right, it's just mind-boggling. So not only are we burning less fuel, we're burning less fuel for fewer minutes. Because we're going to get there quicker. Yeah, really, really awesome bit of engineering. And it took us an hour and a half to get to our trans transonic point, which is about 50% of the distance. It's actually just shy. So the leg we're on now, this second half, is actually ever so slightly further in terms of distance than that hour and a half. But you'll see this won't take us an hour and a half. <laughs> this will be much, much faster. Yeah, much, much quicker indeed. And burn less fuel. Right. Wrap the head around that. So we know it's about minus 60 outside. The actual total air temperature, so the temperature on the nose, is just over 100 degrees C. Pretty hot. Pretty hot indeed. And we can see actually on there, just to zoom in on that again, temperature maximum operating is 127 for the total air temperature. So if we actually hit that point, then we do need to slow down. Um, bad things happen if uh, the air hitting the nose gets a bit too hot. Still not sorted out the C of G. I'm not quite sure why. We've got plenty of fuel at the back that you can pump forwards. I don't understand. Fuel valves are like spazzing out as well. Oh, yeah, I, I don't understand what the VFE's doing, but I certainly can't do it myself and fly. very complicated <laughs> I've tried it once but didn't do a very good job there's just so many buttons and switches and things you have to open and pumps and blah 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 hell of a lot to do so how are we doing on our uh, Mac 1.95, level 491, 103 degrees on the total air temperature, which is roughly what we expect on the nose, the temperature of the nose, It'd be hotter than that, but... So we're already down at the uh, heel of the boot of Italy, but we're actually halfway down the heel even. There's the, there's the heel, this peninsula as it were, that. And there's the toe of the boot. And we can start seeing but the horizon is no longer flat, it's curved. And if we look up, the sky's looking quite dark up there. As we get a little bit higher, that will become more and more black. Because most of the atmosphere will actually be below us. Um, we may even see some stars, even though it's daytime. 
but on the edge of space, uh, it's the loose, yeah, sort of, maybe, not really. There's not an edge. It's not a sudden, you're now in space, you're suddenly well, not in space. It's a fuzzy gradient. It would be nice if we could hit Mach 2 and see our fuel burn drop. We will hit it, I just was hoping to hit it a little bit sooner. Nav accuracy 14, so that's still very, very good. Happy with that, very happy with that. And we've still got a bit of time in cruise and then we'll do the descent planning because obviously a little bit different in Concorde um, because we're supersonic so we need to slow down. We've got a lot of altitude to lose as well as slow down uh, and get below supersonic. Uh, thankfully we're over sea right up until the airfield so there's no sort of uh, restrictions and subsonic legs um, before the approach. Um, but we will drop out of supersonic um, before, you know, we're too low anyway. Uh, but yeah, you've got to plan that. And you do actually burn a reasonable amount of fuel in descent as well, because we'll almost certainly be using the uh, in-flight reverses. So you can actually reverse two of the engines, like you do on landing, but we can do it uh, on Concorde. We can reverse two of them in flight to slow us down. And then we pretty much just lawn dart to the ground. Remember, it's a very pointy, very slippery aircraft. It doesn't like to go slow. It doesn't like to slow down. So we swing a right now, and now we'll handrail left, uh, Greece, and that is Greece there, off our left hand side. Uh, that is Corfu, I think. Let me just confirm that. Yes, it is. Oh. That is Corfu there. That's Corfu. Cavos being down at the bottom. Anyone who's done a Club 1830s. So we're doing a bit of a weird route, like we saw in the planning. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a longer route, but because we're staying out at sea, we can use Concord's party trick of going fast. How fast? We're nearly there. We're very, very close. And at flight level 500, we, we enter what's called the cruise climb. So at the moment, if we have a look at the uh, OS pilot, we're on max climb. Okay, max climb. Set flight level 600. So max climb is basically maximum speed. And then, if we've if we're trying to accelerate past maximum speed, then we pitch the nose up and convert that into height altitude. Now we're not really climbing much at the moment; just an absolute smidge. But as we burn fuel and we get a bit lighter, we'll be able to climb a little bit faster, and so on. So it's just a very gradual climb, but constantly climbing.
Let's go through. So nearly there, so nearly there. And there it ticks over. Flight level 550,000 feet. So. Auto throttle 1 is on. Max cruise and max climb. I think actually the virtual flight engineer will press that when the time comes. Oh yeah, because we're not quite at Mach 2 yet. So nearly. Oh, this thinks we are. And you'll see something really weird. Why doesn't it quite think we're there? Oh, 199. That's why. So close. So, so close. Which is what? Ground speed, 1,320 miles an hour. Closes. Temperature on the nose is around about 110 degrees. Well, total air temperature. And look at this. Our fuel burn is now exactly the same as it was. Oh, it's just changing a little bit. But it was exactly the same as what it was uh, in subsonic. Right, here we go. Yeah, the virtual flight engineer's done it. We're in Mach hold now at Mach 2. And look at this. Still on max climb, but we're also on max cruise. Having two VNAVs effectively selected simultaneously. Really, really odd, isn't it? Very, very odd. But this is basically because we are in a cruise climb. So we're in max hold. Engines will be at what the engines will be. But as we get lighter, we'll be able to climb a little bit higher. And actually to maintain the speed and to not overspeed the aircraft, we need to climb. So we're just, rather than straight and level in cruise, we're just in a gradual climb all the way. And if we were doing transatlantic, um, you're just gradually climbing all the way. So that's the Mach 2 checklist complete. So we're now as fast as we can go, we'll just gradually climb up to a maximum of flight level 600 if we even get there. And there's Mach 2. Twice the speed of sound. Awesome. So what we can do now is let's have a look at the ramps, see how much those ramps are, have closed now. And the bucket should be fully open, and they are indeed. Give 
do some cinematics for a moment. Oh wow, look at that. Excuse me, munching on grapes. So we're starting our turn now, um, start heading more easterly, now we've uh, pretty much passed most of Greece, So how quick we're going. Remember how long it took to get through Europe and we've just done Italy and Greece in, what, 25 minutes, 20 minutes? My Mac hold came off. And now, you can see we're actually burning slightly less fuel than we did in supersonic um, in subsonic cruise. So, I wasn't joshing you. Now, because we've turned, and the wind, obviously, is now playing a different role, because it's coming from a different direction with respect to us, you might have noticed we actually descended a bit there to keep the speed up. Now, that's perfectly normal for Concorde. It's not, as I say, you're not holding a flight level. You're sort of having to ebb and flow. Although that was quite a violent turn, typically Concord flew more or less in a straight line um, when it was supersonic for most of the other routes. Not all of them. I think one we did on the channel was up to uh, Keflavik in Iceland. That one's got quite a sharp turn round the bottom of Ireland.
So we've got just shy of an hour's worth of fuel. Yeah, it's going to be closer than I'd like. But we're doing what? 1200 knots? And we've got about 600 miles to go. So that's about half an hour's worth of flight time. Obviously we'll be slowing down. So we, hopefully we should be fine. We shouldn't need to divert. might just be able to see Crete there and we're going to skirt along the south side of Crete excuse me while I do a pause rep there we go so there's the south side of Greece can't even see Italy anymore it's gone I can only just see Cyprus up the, right up there. Oh, black grapes are so good. I hope everyone's having a good weekend anyway. Although this video won't, probably won't come out on the weekend. If this is even the one where we managed to get there. I'm feeling a lot more confident than I have done on the previous attempt. But I'm not ashamed to admit I ran out of fuel. It wasn't long after this point actually. Where we, we swing a left in a moment. And I had to make the decision. Because it's quite a long jump between... Crete and, uh, and Cyprus and then um, I thought oh we could divert to Heraklion in Crete and I thought oh, no, we'll probably just have enough fuel to get there and um, we absolutely didn't um, but yeah I cheesed it and thought well if we don't have quite enough fuel we'll be able to divert to Paphos which is a little bit closer uh, we didn't even have enough fuel to get anywhere near there. But um, we have a lot more fuel today. And actually the wind's in our favour as well. Which is good. We're not as high. Weirdly. We got up to flight level 600 in, in the failed flight very, very quick. Well, that's probably because we were so light. Because <laughs> we didn't have enough fuel on. So here's the hard left turn. Where we head towards the south side of Crete. Uh, Crete. And there's Crete there. And we're going to skirt up the south side of Crete here. Our turning circle at this speed is pretty atrocious, as you would imagine. But that's absolutely fine. Oops, sorry. The plan was just to have a couple of grapes and not stuff my face like a tramp on, <laughs> on video, but... Oh, so moorish. So C of G is now actually within limits, which is good. See how it's all moving and changing quite quite a lot. It's a hell of a job the flight engineer did. So we're climbing a little bit again now. That's good. Just a smidge over Mach 2. And what's that? Flight level 515. We might not hit 600 actually.
we can sort of see the darkness of space can't see any stars though we're not quite high enough for that oh, that's a shame never mind So we are going more or less east, give or take. I'll tell with it, I'm going, I'm going butt wild on these grapes. That fuel flow 4.9. Yes, child. Absolutely mental, isn't it? I'm still climbing, but not not by much at all. At 2.01. Now, when we come to slow down, we can't just pull the throttle back. If you did that, you would get a horrendous engine surge and the engine would blow up. Um, because all of a sudden, what you're doing is you, you're putting a huge amount of drag on the engine uh, in terms of the air is being forced into it at such a high speed, but you're, you're not keeping it spinning. So it becomes a windmill, and that's not a good thing, obviously. Well, the engine exploding is clearly not a good thing. So you actually have to bring the throttle back very slowly, and you can't go below uh, a certain percent throttle. Uh, I think it's 75%. Uh, it's done in throttle lever angles, um, which are the numbers. You can't quite see it, because I can't, but it's the numbers down here um, so actually to slow down it's not as simple as just pull the power back you have to do it gradually and slow down gradually so it actually takes quite a significant amount of time to slow down um, so that's something we will factor in To that extent, let's um, let's do the descent calculator then. So we're supersonic. We're cruising, what flight level five twenty ish, something like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, average wing component is. Zero. Oh, that's easy. Our target waypoint is Bossis. Uh, in fact, no, it's not. It's Epont. And our target flight level... Let me around about that. So 149 miles before Epont is when we need to start our descent. So 150 miles, call it. Um, if I pull up the charts, oh, I just killed your screen, didn't I? So that I think is Bossis. That's Epont. So we want 150 miles before that. I don't know how long this leg is. In fact, I can find out how long that leg is. C 
16. Oh no, sorry, 78 miles, that is. So we want, what, 72? Um, sorry, I was trying to, yeah. Uh, so we want 72 miles before that waypoint. Thirty-four, thirty-one. It's this next waypoint. Cool. Oh, that's brilliant then. So we want, what was it, 72 miles. 378 to go. So 72 miles is our top of drop. And that reads 72. So what we can do though, now there's no approach, there's no procedural approach um, from the flight plan we're doing from the sites like this. Uh, not not one that Concorde is capable of flying in any way, shape or form. Um, so, oh, what's the conditions? 286 at 8 knots, right, so yeah, we've got to loop around and uh, and come, come in the other way. Uh, actually, yes, we do, yeah, yeah. So it's runway 2, 2. So I'm just looking at looking at the chart because yeah so there's a DME oh no uh, there's a DME arc there we go so from Bossis you would fly this DME arc like that um, I don't have much confidence that well, I can fly it, let alone Concorde. Uh, but either way, I'm not overly confident that that's doable. So we will we will self vector and just turn it into a square, effectively a square uh, circuit. But we can key in the ILS stuff. So it's one one o three. Hello. On a course of two two one. Uh, we could do an ILS, but to be honest, I'd like to fly the visual. It's, it's really good fun. It's quite challenging. How are we doing? 13 tonnes of fuel. Yeah, we should be fine. A little on the uh, empty side, but not, not too bad. Considering I brought an extra 10 tonnes, though more than what the flight planner said we'd need <laughs> clearly we needed it mm. 
Why is the CFG being pushed so far forwards? That's weird. Why is it doing that? Can I ignore it in the hope that we're not about to run out of fuel? This is really well. I don't know why it's doing that. My CFG's going absolutely mental. I assume because we're low fuel, so we can't quite pump it quick enough, but. That's a bit worrying. Right, we're just passing the east coast of Greece now, or the east end of Crete. I say Greece, Crete. So the next island we'll see off the nose will be. Oh, jeez, sorry. That was right next to the mic as well. My bad. Um, will be Crete. Uh, sorry, will be Cyprus on the nose. Yeah, we're not, not far away at all. Show you the moving map. So, just past the east end of Crete. Next up, Cyprus. So you can really see how long it took us to do that. Subsonic, and then as soon as we hit this point, and then supersonic, and we've just gone... Right the way around. Not making quite as good sound effects as that. <laughs> so things to remember those ramps pretty well closed at the moment that's interesting. Spill doors just opened. I'm not entirely sure why the spill doors are opening, but they are. No, it's not that one. No. Oh, I know what's not helping. I know what I forgot to do. Engine control schedule to normal. That's probably not helps our fuel burn. Two twenty two, what were we looking for? Seventy two.
the distance to go is definitely more than 10 miles. Minus 61 degrees outside our temperature static. Temperature on the nose, well, total air temperature, 111 degrees. Static, yeah, as we saw, minus 60. We're getting there. Leaving Creek behind, and whatever island that is. Can we see Corfu yet? To Corfu, Cyprus? Not quite. But we're committed to getting there now. It would take too long to turn around and go back to Crete. So now the nearest airfield is now actually Cyprus, Paphos to be exact. So we are committed to Cyprus. Yeah, we're getting there. So nav accuracy is still pretty good actually, that's nice. And we've suddenly started climbing again. No point us burning more fuel to get higher when we're this close. So there we are in our hold now. Fuel burn will drop off quite a bit. Just over 9 tonnes of fuel. So we can do our decel checklist because uh, we're, we're going to hit 72 miles or whatever it is pretty quick now. Um, and we can just about see Cyprus on the horizon. So that's how far away it is yet yeah, we're, we're ready. So, decel and descent checklist. Safety height is irrelevant for us because uh, we're over water, so safety height is zero. Well, 1,000 feet. Uh, ASI bugs um, is a good question, actually. Landing. 
so one five eight we won. So let's call it one sixty. Oh, where did that go? This is just a reminder for me. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, fuel at destination, 12 tonnes. Yeah, not a chance. Okay, cool. So that's actually all we needed to do. Uh, alt hold is set. It is. Descent altitude can now be set. Boom. Why is it not letting me do that? Uh. Okay, something's gone slightly weird with the 3D cockpit there. Very weird with the 3D cockpit wise. Why none of the dials moving all of a sudden? It's cursed. This flight is cursed. Ah, there we go, it's it's reloaded itself. 79 miles, right, so, decel point. Warning landing display is fine. Uh, okay, so this is the important bit. We have to press this test button. All is good. And then press F2. So now the flight engineer will bring the throttles back to the correct uh, TLA, throttle lever angle. And then we want to do and then we slow down so at 360 knots engage alter choir and then at 350 knots select IES hold so this is indicated airspeed of course which is a bit weird when you're supersonic but anyway and what we'll see is as we slow down the ramps will go up and you can see them slowly nudging up there Paphos is down here I think we're alright on fuel a bit low for my liking but uh, we've got half an hour of fuel technically or just shy of actually about 20 minutes so we're maintaining altitude, but we're slowing down. Because if we were to point towards the ground now, you just wouldn't slow down. Um, everything would get very, very hot. Not too dissimilar to the Space Shuttle re-entering. Obviously the numbers are much bigger on the Space Shuttle, but... Um, it's very similar limitations. So we slow down first, and then we lose the height. Losing height in this, easy. If you've got your speed under control, you can, as I say, lawn dart into the ground.
I'm not slowing down as quickly as I'd like. Weirdly, we're actually speeding up. Wow. Oh, well. I think the flight engineer got his calcs wrong. At this rate, we're going to massively overshoot Larnica. <laughs> we've never had issues when I've done across the pond, Iceland, so on and so forth. It's always been absolutely fine. Alright, it's coming back nicely now. Manual intervention. Lanika's down there somewhere. Not that far up, round about here, right? Eh? So what is it? Three sixty, also quiet. Through 70 knots. Yeah, we are going to overshoot Larnica Bus. That's alright, it just gives us a little bit more wiggle room. Alter Choir. And I yes hold. Oh, I yes hold, sorry. And yes, now we are going full on lawn dart. How's the speed doing? About 1.3 ish. TLA of 32, right, should be 34. That's close enough for me though. I 
And when I say we're lawn darting, oh, I'm not pulling your leg. We are lawn darting. Very much so. And we're just about to pass through Mac 1. I mean, that would be terrifying seeing that do that. Wow. There's Mac 1. And throttles can go idle now. And if we look at the ramps. The ramps are fully open again, then. Uh, so now, we need to turn the heaters back on. So they come on. Throttle masters get flicked over to the other one. Hello. Uh... The D-Mist comes back on. And engine control schedule can go to approach. Flight deck door switch apparently goes to open. I'm going to call bullshit on that. Cabin signs will come on. Brake fans off. Just be. Batteries fine. Fuel is okay enough. And we didn't actually need the in-flight reverses, as it turned out. I forgot how quickly this thing loses height. And that turn there puts us downwind. Flight level 200. Oh, actually, let's do that. And I think that's Larnica there. Not rendered in yet. What was ping? Probably CFG. Oh no, it wasn't.
Yeah, she comes down quick. <laughs> yeah, wises. I've actually got a load of space to play with here. I thought we were going to be a bit close in, but we're not. Flight level 110 coming up. And we'll level out of flight level 100. So Altitude alert, 1000 to go. I want to lose a bit of speed before we descend again. Oh, that's some G force. Nice hard pull back there. So it's flight level 100. So lights on. Local pressure. We're not transitioned yet. Is 1015. Let's wait for that speed to come back a bit. Oh, come on, textures. That shadow now uh, textures. There's Larnica down there. So, this is where we see why Concord had this droop nose. So, visor down a little bit. Uh, which is fine. Altimeters we can set. 1015. Oh. Uh, 1015. Um, Rad INS is to Rad, both sides. Autopilot changeover. That's important to do. We have to use the other autopilot. Good. over there somewhere. So notice as we're slowing down I can't see what's in front of me. Right, brake fans will come on. Oh, 
So let's turn base. Base to the base. Fuel, yes, I am well aware of that. So you definitely can't see where I'm going now. So down she goes again. And this is where we then start sitting up in our seat. One leg spike. I'm going to descend a little bit more, a little bit quicker, I mean. So we'll turn all the lights on. And we're just waiting to pick up this ILS. You're yeah, well aware we should be fine as long as we don't need to go around, in which case it might be a bit sketchy, but we should be fine. So we are actually managing to follow this coastline, that'd be awesome if you were down there on the beach. Oh, that would be very cool. The runway's there. A bit high, but we know we can descend quite quickly in this thing. And we are descending quite quickly. I won't be able to jump in and out of views because I keep having to hoik myself up. And the workload does get quite high in a moment. So 250 degrees gives us a 30 degree intercept onto the ILS. Altitude alert, 1000 to go. And we can see the puppy lights now, which is nice. So, gear down. Gear down. And nose down. Radio altimeters are active. Right, I'm going to get very quiet now, because uh, oh, she's fun to land, but she's hard, very hard work.
I could technically do cat 3, but I'm not gonna. Once it's got itself lined up, and then I've got a fighting chance. So there we go, we've captured the ILS and we've captured the localizer. So autopilot away. And I'm gonna fly this in by hand and probably make a meal of it. Let's just give you one outside view on approach. 1,000 feet radio. That famous nose up attitude, right? That's it, I'm afraid. There you go. That's the normal view. So much I'm having to sit up in my seat. You can see my control inputs down here. Such high. 800 feet. No auto brake. No spoilers. No parachute. Auto throttles off. 500 feet stable. Keep that throttle on. So we're very high drag at the moment with the nose up so much. Feet. So manual throttles now. Manual stick. 300 feet. Can't flare too much without tail striking. 200 feet. Watching that angle. 50, 40, 30, 20, 50. And there's the bucket reverses. Hard, hard on the toe brakes. 50, 40, 20 knots. Tell you what, that was one of my best landings on this. Without shadow of a doubt. Brakes are probably glowing because I stamped on them very hard. Oh no, they're not too bad actually. That's surprising. Um, right, we could two engine taxi. I think you are supposed to. Yeah, no, I'm not going to make that turn. Taxiing up to usual standards. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Transponder. Can go back to standby. Don't need you anymore. Oh yes, and we are very light, so we're accelerating on idle throttle now on the taxi. And we're going to go up there to one of the jetways. So I mean how far ahead of the cockpit, of the nose wheel the cockpit is. And I fixed my Larnaca. yay! Right, we're going to go in there. So we're going to go in there. Why is the... Oh, it's not. It's fine.
this probably isn't going to be taking account for Concord's nose. Oh, that was terrible parking. Standard. Uh, okay, so here we are. We'll do the close down. So parking brake is on. Um, flight control inverters. Can come off. Anti stall can come off. Uh, lights are all off. Oh, did I leave them on? Whoops. Transponders off. Brake fans. I'm amazed the brakes didn't get too hot. Oh, they are a little bit. Those two are a little bit warm, so we'll leave the brake fans on. Shush, Concord. Uh, flight directors off. Um, let me just check that's actually done the thing. Is so going to work? Oh, probably not because we've still got the engines on. Um, so HP valves all go off for one, two, and three. Then we request ground power. Uh, ground power, ground air. And then we connect ground power. Shush Concord. Shush. Rush aircraft, batteries off. Click, 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 click. Were we on grain bypass the whole time? Whoops. Uh, hydraulics off. Just a case of flicking all the switches now. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so now grain power is connecting, engine four can come off. Throttle masters can go off. And yeah, it's just a case of flicking all the switches, which isn't particularly exciting. So, will the jetway work now? I don't think it will. I'm probably not parked very well here. Why are none of my keyboard commands working? Oh, there we go. I did say main exit opening and then clearly didn't open. Not too sure what that smoke effect is either. Well, there we go. Down, safe, landed, good things. I'm quite amazed. Finally, finally got this to work. I very much hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we will do the return flight, absolutely, without doubt, uh, and I really look forward to it. But until then, stay safe.